Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 26th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery of a couple days ago. This is back on October 21st, and if you see this area back here, that is our jet stream that brought our powerful storm system across the Pacific Northwest. So I'm going to scroll in here and kind of play this out for you. I've got two hour chunks going on and you can see the development of this jet stream as it starts to rip across the North Pacific Ocean. Of course, here we are to the right across the Pacific Northwest. And then we bring our atmospheric river across the region. You can see that pushing here. That's the initial precipitation we got. But watch this area here south of the Aleutian Islands. You can see that developing and then pushing across the Gulf of Alaska and then really spinning up off the coastline. So this is the storm system that brought us our very strong winds last night, brought multiple rounds of thunderstorm activity and pushed on through the region. And you kind of see the bent back occlusion right there. The spin in the system really pounded into the Washington coast and then moved up some of the Puget Sound there as well. And there we are as we go on in through this morning, right about there. So taking a look a little bit closer here at that, and I want to show you a couple of things. In fact, we're going to go to the infrared satellite image because I want to show you here as the storm came through yesterday, right there, you see that spin. That's the main bent back occlusion that moved into the Washington coast, 71 for Westport, 77 for Hoquiam. And then you can see that perfectly ride into the Puget Sound right there. And it brought some strong gusts here. I can rip the skylight off of my house here in Normandy Park and a big gust for SeaTac, a lot of damage out in some of the rural areas as well. Some of these convectively driven gusts got into places that some of these south or southwest winds don't normally get into. And that even occurred along some of the coastal areas as well. On our drive from Astoria back on Highway 30 on I-5, you saw trees down much of the way on the side. And you could see that into like uh, the neighborhood we went to into Federal Way and back into Normandy Park. There were trees and big branches down all over the place. So I'm going to go out and look at some damage here today. And then you can see that move through the area there. And we still have some of this showery precipitation moving through as we go through the day today it's thunderstorm potential and some mountain snows and then we've got additional storm development possible on in through uh this week here but we'll take a look at that in a moment there's a picture of my skylight there so yeah it actually blew this thing off i don't know how the wind got under this this wall right there blocks from the south so i don't know how that got in this must have mixed down or kind of swirled around on the back side of that and pulled that off but we just had the roof recently redone did not have this screwed down properly the contractor forgotten the screws were actually sitting up here so i'm gonna i already got that on there this morning but i'm gonna screw that down later on and you can see down into the bathroom there so yeah great fun stuff you probably heard that or some of you guys heard that on the live stream as it actually happened yesterday when my wife called me. So also a lot of power outages yesterday, again, into the rural areas where a lot of these places are usually sheltered from some of these south winds, got hit uh, pretty hard yesterday. And, and you can see th this doesn't cover even some of... Uh, portions of Long Beach out there. It got some power outages. They were off and on, but you can see uh, portions of the coastal areas here and each went up towards Thurston County, Pearson, King County, up towards Snohomish, Skagit County as well had some power outages. And this is yesterday morning, the shelf cloud that came over. You can see Matthew caught me there standing there near the roadway. And yeah, this was producing some lightning with it as well. We had four rounds of thunderstorms, very prolific storms moving on into the coast yesterday morning. So taking a look at some of these wind gusts here, I'll be scroll back there and try to get this to refresh. But if you scroll in, SeaTac had 53 miles per hour right there. And then you can see some of these big gusts again, got into some unusual areas. And there is Hoquiam at 77, Westport at 71. We measured 62 there right near Ocean Park uh, last night. You probably saw that during the live stream if you were watching. And if you want to record this crazy weather we get here in the Pacific Northwest, get one of these Tempest stations. Very fun stuff here. It does everything a weather station should do. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. So we still have these winter weather advisors that go through tonight. They could probably extend that on in through tomorrow morning for many locations here. But watch out for a few inches of additional snowfall. I'll show you the latest in the models on that. Same thing for the Oregon Cascades as well. And you can see we still have that thunderstorm threat as we go through the day today. Now, this jet stream here, it is losing its punch somewhat, but we have another strong low developing out here across the Gulf of Alaska. That's probably going to bring us a frontal system as we go through the midweek period coming up here. And then as we go through the extended, we may have additional, uh, you know, windy systems, atmospheric rivers kind of moving through the region as we go on in towards the end of the month and on in through the first portion of November. You can kind of see that power pack jet stream there coming out of the southwest. Now, if we take a look at what we're doing here today, you can still see that precipitation moving 
across the region. A little bit of a break as we go through the day Monday. And then on Tuesday, we start to get some of that precipitation. We go through late Tuesday night with this deep low moving up towards southeast Alaska. And this kind of clipping portions of the Pacific Northwest and pushing a frontal system through there. And then we start to worry about this next system out here. It could have an atmospheric river associated with its monster 949 millibar low out across the Gulf of Alaska. A very strong storm there. And again, with that atmospheric river associated. Now, looking at precipitable water, I'll scroll off into the future a little bit more, and you can see that a strong low as we go through next week. Frontal system pushes through, and then we deal with the potential atmospheric river as we go towards the end of next week there. So we've got to watch out for that one. We'll see if this has any windstorm potential across the region as well. And I'll show you some more extended forecast here in a moment. But if we look at the North American model, high resolution, shorter range, you can see that strong storm moving a little bit further south. Shows it up towards Haida Gwaii as we go through the day Tuesday. That's going to bring some additional rounds of precipitation, like I mentioned. But but first things first, let's go over some of the stuff going on today. You can see this is still moving in. This is about 10 o'clock, so we still got these showers rolling in. It's 9.20 as I'm doing this briefing, and you can see some of that activity pushed across western Washington, again across the Cascades, still some wintry weather occurring. And you can see this across my King and Pierce County actually shows up maybe a thunderstorm or two rolling through as we go through this afternoon, so heads up for that. And we push on through into Monday morning. Still some of these showers around, still dropping a little bit of snowfall there for the higher terrain of the Cascades. Cascades, you know, so watch out for that. And then we go off into Tuesday and you see that next system starting to get in and starting to impact Western Washington and Southwest BC. Now, lightning threat again today. You can kind of see how that continues as we go through this late morning and afternoon hours. Some of that lightning threat is there. Then we ramp that down as we go on in through the day on Monday, pretty much that lightning threat really starts to come to an end. So accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. And again, as we're going through the day today, watch out. You're still getting some wintry driving conditions across the higher terrain. This is accumulated positive of snow depth. So that is dealing some precipitation in the form of snow to Snoqualmie Pass, White Pass, Highway 12, and up towards Highway 2 as well. So be prepared for those wintry driving conditions. And you saw that as I go on in through today, some of the snow level dropping down as we go through tonight to some of the higher hills also. So be aware of that. Now, big waves on the coastline yesterday. Got some fun uh, video of that, and I'll try to make a video out of that over here, over the next few days. But as we went through uh, the last night and through the morning hours, you can kind of see the big wave activity here again as we go through Sunday morning. And the waves remain elevated today, but uh, kind of on the wane there a bit. And then as we go on into and look at the next system, kind of mainly into Vancouver Island there and portions of Haida Gwaii, southeast Alaska. But it does bring an increase here as we go through the midweek period, and then. We'll see what's going to come after that. Depending on those storm tracks, we could have additional big wave action as we go off into the future. Who knows how that's going to unfold right now. Uh, now, looking at total precipitation in inches. So this is as of this morning coming up here. And you can kind of see that precipitation here over the next day or two. And then we bring some of these storms in here. And we keep rolling on in towards the end of the month. This is on Halloween. It looks like it may be rainy, especially for western Washington, some of western BC, as you go through the day on Halloween. Halloween night, there may be a washout for some locations. We'll continue to watch that. And then we scroll on into the early portion of November and look at some of these precipitation totals as we still have the storm track pointed at us here as we go through the first week of November. I mean, look at that. Almost seven inches for Seattle. Huge amounts across some of the higher terrain and still big amounts across some of the Willamette Valley as well. So we'll be watching those storm systems and breaking them down for you day by day, one by one. And if we look out in the extended forecast, you can see there is some windstorm potential out there, but there's nothing that's going to be in any good agreement as of right now but we do have the potential as we go towards the end of the month and on into the first week of november check out the patreon page got some errands i'm going to do here i'm going to go around and also look at some wind storm damage probably on the day today so um i'll be out doing that but let's take a look at the six to ten day here really quick as well a lot of the west coast above normal as we go through the first week of november above normal precipitation signal makes sense with what we just looked at as well and this was actually issued two days ago this is kind of a november forecast november 8th through the 21st equal chances for temperature but also above normal chances for precipitation so anyway hope you guys are doing okay Okay, after the storm yesterday, we did have a fatality there. So yeah, you got to take these storms seriously. I mean, this was a pretty good wall up here for late October. And yeah, hopefully everybody else was safe. Um, let me know what you guys saw. If you have pictures to send me, go ahead and look up the email address on the YouTube page and you know, send me information if you want. Send me images or you can do it on uh, via X or Twitter. I'm Seattle Weather Guy there. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day and I will talk to you guys later.